Hello, 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 hello. I am so excited. We are here for another week of Serenity Book Club. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining in. I am your host, Joan, today, and I have some wonderful ladies here with me as we discuss the book our girlfriend Lisa wrote, Forgiving What You Can't Forget. So I am ready to dive in and discuss what we didn't discuss last week. So before we get started, uh, Bonnie, can you just start us off in prayer? Yes. All right, let's go. Dear Lord, we just thank you and we praise you and we love you and we give you glory and honor, Father God, for your worthy. We thank you for this moment right now, Father God, where we are about to uh, study, discuss, uh, share our book that we've been reading, Father God, about uh, forgiving, Lord God, what we can't forget. I thank you, Father God, for the uh, opportunity of all of us to share that that you've uh, we've learned from this book, Father. And I pray that uh, as we hear uh, in the studio and then those who are listening on Facebook and those that will look uh, and see it later, Father God, that we will learn uh, about your forgiveness. We will learn about uh, how to forgive and forget, Father God. We just thank you and we praise you, Father God. We lift up um, each lady that's here today, those that are listening. Bless each of us, Father God, as we go forth and share, share, Father God, from our hearts what it is you've taught us through this book. We thank you and we praise you, Father God. I lift up Pastor Yvette for you, uh, 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 to you, Father God. Just um, bless her and keep her, Father God, while she's away from us at this moment. In the background, but uh, not able to just come on with us, Lord. We thank you and we praise you for her, Father God. And even her selecting this book, Lord, knowing that it's something in it for all of us to learn. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So guys, I am so excited this week. You know, I talked to Reverend Vet, and she was like, we've been doing this book since June 30th. Hi, Miss Vivian. Great to see you this afternoon. And so it has been a lot of meat in this book. So let's get started. So one of the, oh, hi, Miss Estelle. It's so good to see you. So let's get started with the first question. So last week, we talked about the emotions and the physical appearance of us sometimes of how we may react to whatever the thing we're dealing with as it relates to our forgiveness and sometimes our emotions. So one of the questions that uh, we didn't get to from last week was, what hurt might my offender have suffered that would have led them to do what they did? Can I have compassion for that offender's brokenness? Can we? Ladies, anybody? Yes, we can. Should we? we should have. We are all broken. We also need their compassion for our brokenness in order for whatever the, you know, going on, that relationship, that whatever. But yeah, we must have compassion on others. And we can't just expect them to have compassion on us. We're perfect and, and they're broken. No, we're all broken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that compassion is, is twofold. Mm -hmm. We must have compassion on them. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be around them. We don't need to deal with them, but we must have some type of compassion, understanding what they must have went through, what must have been their thing. Mm -hmm. But I say yes. So I was going to bring in when you said, Carolyn, if the person was not around it. So what if the person walks in the room? If you have I, forgiveness for them, God going to give you something where it's going to be okay when they come in. You mm -hmm. can actually hug them, embrace them. You, you're still not going to do all that dealing with them, but you mm -hmm. still would have that forgiveness that you can forgave them. Mm -hmm. We are not perfect. We still walk in God's ears every day. Yeah. God's still right there looking at us. We're still sinning. We're still doing things that are wrong. That compassion needs to be the same compassion that God has on us. That yeah. forgiveness needs to be the same forgiveness that God has given to us. Mm. 
So, I mean, it can be done. I, I have done it. Somebody who have hurt me real bad and they came and I was able to have decent conversation, sit with them at the table, do everything. But I know that I'm not going to get back in the relationship with them, get back in, in, in uh, you know, uh, sisterhood with them, get back into a brotherhood with them, get back into whatever that relationship might have been. But mm -hmm. it's possible. It's not easy, but it's possible. Yes. Aprila, what were you getting ready to say? Yeah, I, I want to say a couple of things. First, thing, first off, hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. eh? So a lot of times we don't think about, and most of the time we don't. I want to say a lot of times, the majority of times, uh, when we're hurt by someone and they hurt us in whatever capacity that is, whether it's abuse, uh, physical, anything, um, when they hurt us, all we know is we're hurt. We don't, most of the time, we don't think about what prompted that. I'm not saying that's the case in every case, but mm -hmm. most of the time, that person has been probably abused in that same type of way, okay, or worse, and they have not processed it or gone, or the persons that 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 were in their lives didn't help them get uh, with the help that they needed. And I'm speaking from ex recent, really from experience. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it's really hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. But then you have to say, you know, and I think this takes maturity, spiritual maturity, and a little bit of growth. Um, you say, okay, what happened to them? And mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't ask that question. We look at the news all day and we see all these different things, but do we ask the question, what happened to that person? Why are they doing right. that? Right. Then you say, okay, and mm -hmm. going back to what you said, Miss Carolyn, uh, Carolyn, the uh, uh, you said something and I just lost my train of thought. The bottom line is, uh, we don't think about it. So then you're in this, they're hurting, and now they're hurting you because they the, we're broken. That's what I was going to say. That brokenness hasn't. And we're all broken. So we don't think about that. We don't think about their brokenness. All we know is I'm hurt. And there's nothing wrong with thinking about you being hurt. But we we don't take the time to say, what happened to that person? Mm -hmm. So then, um, and, and we mad or we hurt. And we don't, it's like, I don't want to deal with you. Mm -hmm. You know? But then if that's us, I mean, when we do stuff, we want somebody to have compassion on us. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, I like I said, I've been dealing with something for a few years where that's actually something that's happened. And I but I dug deep and I said, and I asked somebody who was familiar, well, you know, and I kind of posed the question, well, what happened? You know, did did you know about this? And then I got mad at the person because the person that could have controlled it, meaning helped that person once they were hurt, they didn't do nothing about it. So now you got another person uh, doing stuff that they shouldn't do. But mm -hmm. in knowing that, I think that actually helped me, me, even though, and that wasn't, mm -hmm. helped me to learn how to process forgiving them and actually put me in a place where I can actually have, contrary to what you said, Carolyn, relation and really love them and meet them mm -hmm. where they are. And that is very, very hard. I couldn't, and, and when I first felt, when I first got hurt, I couldn't have never seen that. But mm -hmm. I, I always say only God, only God. So do, can you have compassion for the offender's brokenness? You can. Did I want to have compassion? No, I didn't. But as a Christian, God does when he replaces that hard heart and he gives us that heart of flesh. He said something about that today. The hard heart, hard hearts break, fleshy hearts don't. God can mold that heart and do some things. And so I know I'm, I'm talking a lot and rambling, but really the answer to the question is um, you can, you can, and, 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 but only God. I, I, I can't mm -hmm. tell you how he does it, but he does it. I am proof. And I think uh, my, my, my buddy knows, she knows some depth about it and she can tell you, and it's genuine, you know, right. and I don't squirm for real. And, and, and I, and I'm okay. And I'm, in, and I'm really in relationship 
and that's yeah. so crazy. That mm -hmm. is like crazy. Okay, oh yeah, I'm done. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so uh, I want to acknowledge Miss Vivian. She says, "If Jesus could have compassion on the people that crucified him, who are we to not forgive?" and give someone another chance. You are so right, Miss Vivian. As always, we need to give you an offering after every book club. Does anybody <laughs> else want to answer the question? You know, um, I think about the author and the, uh, the neighbor who sexually assaulted her mm -hmm. more than once. I do not think I can have compassion mm -hmm. for a person that does that to a child as well, what for anybody, for anybody, but especially to a child. Mm -hmm. Because you lie and say, or you, you know, basically say, yeah, this is right what I'm doing because of X, Y, Z, or I'm going to harm your family. So, you know, it's okay. Child, children are innocent. They don't know anything right from wrong. And then you do that to a kid. You muck up their life. Mm-hmm. And I just don't think I can have compassion for them. Now, maybe it happened to that individual mm -hmm. in his life, sometime during his life, and he's taking that action, he or she taking that action and doing it to somebody else who can't defend himself. So. Mm -hmm. Well, she said that, you know, in anything, when it comes to forgiveness, it kind of, it has a process. So if that process takes 20, 30, 40, 50 years, it's okay because it's the forgiveness is not going to come in a, as soon as we put in a microwave number of a minute, forgiveness is going to happen. So I think it's okay with your feelings, Glenda, as it relates to you, you thinking that, hey, I may not be able to, but she says in the book that it doesn't happen overnight and it takes time. So we're going to acknowledge Anastasia, who's here on Facebook. Thank you for joining us. And Patrice, who has joined us, Miss Estelle and Carol. Thank you so much for joining us on today. And if you want to join in or chime in to some of the questions, you're more than welcome. So we're going to go on to the next question. Before, has anybody else wanted to say anything else after Glenda? Anybody? Okay. All right, well, let's go on to the next question. So she talked about so many different things. And the next thing she was talking about was, how may we look at things a little bit differently as it relates to our forgiveness? How, what, what can we do to see it differently? Do you all have any thoughts on that? How might we look at things differently? Nobody? Anybody? Anybody <laughs> on Facebook? <laughs> I was thinking about it. Um, I was thinking about that question. Um, and based on the last question, the only thing that I can only thing that I can think about um, some of my offenses differently is um, is yeah. I always like to consider where the people. Um, what they lived through, what hurt them, um, or what made them that, you know, what kind of environment created the peop the person to be in, um, to be like that. Mm -hmm. And to, um, and so the only thing that I could add to, or how can I look at it differently is that, um, they have a problem, you know, they had a situation, mm -hmm. they had a problem themselves. And I, I'm just one of the, you know, what they did to me is just one of their symptoms and that they mm -hmm. also need heal. They need healing. And now uh, I need healing because they didn't get their healing quick enough. So, uh, <laughs> right. right. And I think about like, uh, like if we look at um, the popular, I don't want to say a name, but popular singer from Chicago who just got um, hemmed up with a lot of charges um, on his conduct with young children. and when we, we look back at his life, he had the same kind of uh, mm -hmm. offense to him. Right. And it was left unchecked right. all of these years. And right. how many more victims did he create? And not every victim is going to hurt somebody else, but there's a percentage of those people that can, that that can trickle down to other children. And so, um, yeah, 
basically what we would want to do is be able to get people healed. No, that's you good. From the beginning. That's really good. Anybody else want to answer that question? And thank you, Anastasia. It's great seeing you. She says, good afternoon, beautiful ladies. And you, you're beautiful too. And Cynthia Lipsy. Hi, Cynthia. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Is there anybody else wanting to talk about or anybody on Facebook wanted to discuss the question? I just want to concur with Rose. I thought that was, that's a good, I thought about that too. That's a good example, you know, mm -hmm. unchecked. And it just continues. It continues a vicious pattern. You know, we don't, and most of the time we don't know those details. We just, we only see the outward symptom. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think it's a good. Oh yeah. Point. And so from that, it brought to another question. And that is, is there a redeeming part of this story that I can focus on. So is there a redeeming part of that person that we're not going to talk about um, that could come out of that story? Is there a redeeming part of the story that could come out of your situation? Is there a redeeming part of the story that comes out of our girlfriend Lisa's story? You know, can, can you all think of something that can be a redeeming part of the story that we can focus on the positive other than the negative that has happened? Mm-hmm. Definitely. I, I, I believe that I, I always think that there is um, no pain or suffering that the Lord allows us to go through because, you know, he's there. He sees everything. Um, he has the ability to change every situation or to be able to hold our hands through those situations to give us grace to make it through whichever he sees fit. But there is going to be some kind of suffering to produce a different kind of fruit in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so when we uh when we've been through a suffer when we suffered something, it does produce some good sweet fruit. And so I mm -hmm. think that it allows us to be able to um serve him in a different kind of way, to be able to have care and compassion for his people that we may not have had before, to be able to teach other people how we made it over, to compel us to want to share the gospel with other people, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to let them know that um, come see about this man that I know that helped me <laughs> to right. uh, tell me all about myself. Right. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I think the, the redeeming part is what glory God can get out of it. Mm. Anybody else, anybody on Facebook, anybody here who's present? Okay. We're moving on. So another part in the book, she said, I processed my suffering through the fact that God never wastes our suffering. As Romans 5, 3 through 5 reminds us, we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character hope. And I hope does not put us in shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given us to us with this in mind, I asked myself these questions. And she said, what would a healthy version of me be empowered to do from here? What is a healthy version of you as you continue to go through your forgiveness? What would, what would empower you to do from here? What do you all feel from that? For me, after reading that, it empowered me to always check my emotions when I'm in the per in the presence of that individual. That it empowers me to make sure that I'm fine because I don't want to give off that negative energy as it relates to that offense or what it is that's going on with me to that person that may have offended me or something. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to share their health, healthy version? Um, is it my turn? Can uh, I talk? It's whoever turn who wants to. <laughs> okay. I didn't know if I was cutting somebody else off, and I know I just got you talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> I definitely, first of all, for one thing, again, like I was saying, that service to be able to serve God in a way. Uh, with more information than I had before mm -hmm. to be able to 
to have a testimony to share with other people and work to be able to have different ways to share that testimony. And then also for me to be able to walk in the victory that he he provides um, in the healing from our situation. Um, sometimes I can get caught up in the symptoms or I can get caught up in the pain, you know, the things that that come from um, whatever wounds were inflicted on me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to always remind myself to be able to walk in victory and not in the pain. Um, so when I walk in the victory part, the healing part, the overcoming part, then I'm bringing glory to God. And so that would be uh, a way to for me to show my healed, healthier version. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and that empowers me to go share it with somebody else. Yeah. Anybody um, else? Yeah, I was going to say. Um, the scripture that comes to mind a lot lately is the Bible says it was good that I was afflicted. And you're like, what? What is that? <laughs> but it is because in the affliction, you grow, you change. God mm -hmm. does something. He molds you. And going back to what Rose said, it gives you a testimony. I came through it. How did I come through it? What did he do through it? So, yeah, there's some positive that can come from that. So then when it says it was good that I was afflicted, maybe maybe if I didn't go through that, maybe I would have been a different type of person or my response. I don't know, but God knows. And you know, when you see that, it's like, ugh. But he knows better than we know. So he allowed it for a reason. Not mm -hmm. necessarily, not, I, 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 I didn't like it, but, mm -hmm. but it does develop our character. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Anybody on Facebook want to chime in? Anybody? Well, we can proceed on. It was another question that came to mind. And she said, how can this hurt make me better and not worse? That question is like, who, who, who? Because it makes me think about what you said, Glenda, as it relates to the situation with children. It makes you ask yourself the question, how can that hurt make me better and not worse? You know, uh, can anybody answer or expound on that question? Hmm, anybody on Facebook? Because I'm telling you, that's a question that's like. <laughs> Everybody hurt is different. So it's yeah. hard to really explain the differences of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But. Oh, I'm telling you, I know. All Karen. Our, yeah, all of our hurt for me, my hurt, I can only speak of mine, mm -hmm. that it has made me better. What Teacher Rose and Teacher April have said for me, I agree with it. It just makes you strong. As I always relate to plants and flowers and mm -hmm. vegetables and stuff. When I go out and I prune my rose bush. Do you believe or not I get more rose on that bush? Even though I put it through that distress, even though I put it through that pain, even though I pull some stuff off and had to throw some stuff away, it's the same thing God do with us. Mm -hmm. He take us and he take us and he start pruning us a little at a time. Little at a time, he's taking little things off. Oh, no, that one did. Let me pull that up out of you now. So mm -hmm. that's the thing we're going through as we're healing. Mm -hmm. And just like my rose bush every day, they come and just keep just trying to overtake everything else. It's going to keep growing. It keeps spiraling. And we do, too. So yeah. we have to do the same thing. We have to. God promised us trials and tribulation. We're going to go through some hurt. We're going to go through some pain. And it's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. During that time is when we need to seek God's face more. We need to seek his face and ask him, Lord, what is this I need to learn? Lord, what is this I need to go through? And no, Glenda, I can't speak for the young children. I can't. Yeah. But I can address our situation as an adult now. Because we went through what we went through when we was young. I don't know why I went through it, but I know it made me a better person. Mm -hmm. I know what I went through have taught me now how to serve God in a better way. I I am the minister of my block. Everybody come to me. What they need, I could give them God's word. 
I could walk with them. I could go through them. If they talk about domestic violence, I'm there with them. Because the domestic violence I've gone have gone through and, and still going through. Mm -hmm. When they talk to me about sexual abuse, I know. Mm -hmm. They talk to me about rape, I know. Mm -hmm. I know the thing. God allowed me to go through it so that I could strengthen another person. God mm -hmm. allowed I, I didn't want to go through it either. But now that I know I have enough sense, I can strengthen another person who come my way. I can help the homeless when I go out and feed them, when I go out and, and, and do things for them. I could do the, all these things. I know what I would feel. I've never been homeless, but I could imagine what it would feel like. And when you have someone not helping you to pay your bills and your rent and your stuff, and you trying to do everything and raise four kids, you always wonder, would I be homeless? But I know by the grace of God and me standing there with him, he didn't do it. But he gave me enough stuff to do it. So that, that's what I believe. It, it All this stuff is like growth. Again, back to the rose bush, we grow. Yes. We get more yeah. beautiful. My rose bush people just look down the street and they see, that's a beautiful rose bush. Yes. So, yes. And, and people now see the beauty in me. And no, it doesn't mean how I look. It means the beauty in me, that love, that joy, and that peace that I walk in now, that I could share with others instead of with my head down and mad at the world. Why is this happening to me? So no, I can't speak for the baby, but I know if they allow it and they get the help they need, that they also can one day walk in the same beauty. Oh yeah. Preach, Carolyn. Yeah, because what, what you just said even coincides with the next question. Uh, she said, she said, what might God be giving or revealing to me through this that I can that I couldn't have received before? And I'll read it again. Mm -hmm. What might God be giving or revealing to me? through this that I could have received before. And so uh, Ms. Vivian, as you all are thinking about that question, Ms. Vivian said, it makes us realize that God's grace, mercy, and help, we can make it through anything. That is so, so mm -hmm. true, we sure can. But mm -hmm. what might God be giving or revealing to me through this that I, couldn't have received before. Well, for me, one thing that he's revealing to me that I'm not by myself. I'm not the only person that has been going through this. Because when you're in it, you think you're on a lonely island trying to survive when it's so many others that have gone through or are going through what it is that you're dealing with. So uh mm -hmm. that is the mm -hmm. thing that god keeps revealing to me that i am not alone anybody else you know i want to share something joan may not even uh realize but um when uh my mother passed i uh i, I could have been on that that island by myself but i believe joan's mom had passed before my mom and then yeah. some other uh, people who were working in the ministry with us, um, their moms had passed. And God used all of them to encourage me to get through what I needed to get through. I don't know if they knew that they were helping me make mm -hmm. it through. I saw that they had made it through. So God helped me realize if they can make it through, you can make it through. And then he used mm -hmm. me after that to help others to make it through. So it, it, it's it's having God with you, um, encouraging the ladies on the panel. God is going to get you through. He mm -hmm. helped me get through. He used Joan and many others to help me get through. I'm on the other side. I promise you, you will get through. Mm -hmm. You will, because you're going to be trusting and depending on him. Not because just because teacher Bonnie said it, but because God is with you. And they encouraged me, and I knew God was with them. God was with me. God is with me. Wow. Well, Bonnie, first thing I got to say is, I did not know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I am glad that I was used as a vessel at that time. And so thank you so much 
for sharing that. And that's very encouraging. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we are continuing on in chapter seven of connecting the dots. Joan, let, let me just say that. Yeah, go ahead. That's go because ahead. we have to always remember that God is not a respect of a person. Yes. He, he going to take us through it. He's going to love us. He's going to show us that love. He's going to show me that the things that you've been through, how it's going to help to grow me, how it's going to help to grow another. Mm -hmm. So that's with everybody and everything. We just have to always keep that in mind. God is not a respecter of person. Don't think because they did and they went that you can't do the same thing. He pouring that same thing mm -hmm. into you. Oh, yeah, most definitely. So as we are continuing in connecting the dots, there was another part in the book, and she talked about journaling in the book. Mm -hmm. And she said, when I answered many of these questions, it was not neat or tidy. My journals weren't linear like spreadsheets or crystal clear like pat photographs. They were more like abstract art made up of words that probably wouldn't make sense to others, but that wasn't the point. The point was to help me make sense of myself and correct my perspectives as I sought to move forward. And, and you can do the same thing too. Mm -hmm. When I saw that, I was like, oh my goodness. Because do, does anybody on here journal? Because what I found with journaling, journaling, it's very, very helpful because as you see yourself, as you've written down whatever you're writing down, and like she said, it's like crazy. You got writing up here. You got one word here. You got some of us may have some bad words in our journal. And as we're looking back and then we start to move forward and we see the change that has happened. And the difference in our lives because we see that we have been transformed or changed. Does anybody else have a uh, something about a journal or what they've found out from in the, from journaling? Anybody? So, Joan, um, <laughs> I have been a journaling person since um, I guess as long as I can write. You know how we, we mm -hmm. used to call them diaries. I've had a diary. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody gave me a diary when I was little, maybe nine or 10 years old. And I would write my little thoughts and feelings and fears and all that kind of stuff. And I carried that out. Uh, I kept, I just kept journaling through, um, through to my adult life until somewhere in my 40s. And I just kind of... Um, what I was journaling was getting too deep and too scary, mm -hmm. too much for me to look at. I looked and, and I had, uh, and I still have some of my journals from way back. And I looked back at some of my old journals and I was like, oh, this is too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so for some reason, not conscious, but I just kind of quit journaling. Like it was, it really brings um, the personal touch of a journal and the um, intimacy with the pen and the paper brings up things that you don't want to think about, things that mm -hmm. you probably need to think about, especially when we are thinking about um, collecting the dots. Um, but yet journaling, though, um, what I know it to be is very uh, cathartic, very healing experience just to mm -hmm. be able to let it out without having said it to anyone right. and or shared it with anyone. So journaling mm -hmm. is a blessing. Yes. I might get back to it. I do it only periodically now, not all the time. Yeah. Like I used to. Yeah. Yeah. I truly understand. Anybody else want to chime in? I agree with, I do it, Rose. I, uh, generally, when you go back and you look at the old stuff now, mm -hmm. and you see from where you were to where you are now, especially, or the things that you mm -hmm. went through and how you grew through them, Journaling truly help. Mm -hmm. Journaling, uh, especially, not only did I journal for myself during my cancer journey, I also did it for people at the hospital. I did thousands of stuff, and I would take it to the hospital, and they would put it in the rooms to help other people get through this cancer journey that we had to go through at that time. 
Mm -hmm. So it, it helps. And on this year, it was on my birthday when I found out I had cancer. So this year on my birthday, it'll be 25 years. Wow. And cancer free. And I'm still writing down my journey with God and what's God doing and how he's keeping me. And I keep, one of the things I keep seeing there, why? You must have something for me to do. So as we journal, we we searching for ourselves and God too. I do at least. I search for who I am, what my purpose here for God. How can I do his will? So I start finding, I'm like that. Right now, I'm like, God, do I need to get back out on this cancer journey, even though I'm free right now? Mm -hmm. And encourage more people that you can make it to this 25 years, too. You can make it and you can walk with God hand and hold. So we journaling in help and we look at various area of it for different times of our life. Oh, wow. That is so awesome. So, so awesome. So journaling helps us to connect the dots in our lives as a form of accountability if you cannot talk to others. And that's very, very, very true. Because I journal, uh, and it's so funny, Bonnie, when my mother passed, that was something that really, really helped me to mm -hmm. write down my thoughts. And it was like a secret, as an adult secret diary that you would have for yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's very, very true. So we're going to go ahead and continue on in connecting the dots. And so there was another question. Uh, some people believe you can forgive and go on, but the author says it will take time to heal and find healthy perspective. Do you agree or disagree? I will, for me, I agree. I agree it takes time because if someone says that, Oh, it, it, I'm done. I'm I'm over. Is it a, a, and I'm like, did they really go through the process or the steps through that healing process? Because what it was they've gone through was really really detrimental. And did they really really go fully through, or did they did the microwave minute? As I said earlier, the microwave minute to hurry up and get done with it. So, anybody else? I agree. I agree. Yeah. You can't walk there, in um, the kitchen and the cake is just there. You have to go through that process of making the cake. Yeah. You mm -hmm. you can't. It's anything in our life. We have to go through a process to get it done. We don't just get up in the morning and all of a sudden we up dress and we out the door. We get up in the morning and it's a process we go mm -hmm. through. When we go through hurt and pain, it's the same thing. We go through that process. We have to go through a process of first anger. You, you gotta let the anger. People don't want to say that we have to. We, we get angry. We get discouraged in whatever we went through, mm -hmm. and we have to allow that to kind of, you know, work it out through us. And then after mm -hmm. we anger, we get to the point of the forgiveness and all the other stuff. But no, we have. To, it's a process. Yes. Yes, it surely, surely is. And then I'm sorry, I've been saying connecting is correcting the dots. <laughs> I like, let me, let me just correct this. It's not connecting. We're correcting the dots. So one thing she had said, uh, she said, none of this could be rushed for me and none of it should be rushed for me. We need to feel what we feel. We need to think through what we need to think through. We need to get it all out and sort it all out. And most of all, we need to stay put and be present for it all. So she says, here is what I challenged myself with throughout this process. Whenever I felt ready to return to old patterns and give up. I wanted to read this part aloud as a personal declaration. So I'm going to read through these different declarations that she had. And we mm -hmm. all encourage ourselves to go through this ourselves. So the first one was, I don't need okay. to run away. 
What I'm looking for will never be found somewhere out there. Her next declaration, she said, I Joan, don't. Huh? I want to interrupt you. I, Go for first it. First of all, I feel, I feel personally attacked by this <laughs> statement. I don't need to run away. <laughs> I, I am a self-declared runner. <laughs> I, I want, I, I'm out of town right now because I needed to get away. <laughs> I ain't even go nowhere. I'm in West Lafayette. My, I'm here to see uh, a game for my niece. It's two hours. I've been. I'm gonna be here for three days for this game. <laughs> <laughs> so she. First of all, I mean, I've had I've had my issues with this author before. But this coming straight for Rose is not fair. <laughs> I really think that y'all need to write her letter or something. <laughs> well, I just wanted to, I just wanted to get to interrupt John. This is good. Okay, this no is a good problem. discussion. <laughs> no problem. No problem at all. Because, you know, as she said, this this was her personal declaration. And when I came to this part, and I was like, whew, I need to make this personal declaration too. Cause she said, I don't need to run away. What I'm looking for will never be found somewhere out there. Then her next declaration was, I don't need to isolate. Oh. Sometimes lies scream loudest when there are no other voices to help me call foul. Then she says, I don't need to numb it away. Because a lot of times we take substances and things and to numb away what it is that we're dealing with. And she said, I can't numb away my way to better. Never am I closer to healing than when I'm feeling are strong enough to motivate me to attend to them. Healing is letting the feeling point me all the way to the cause of an issue. And when it's properly addressed, it gives way to hope, peace, and joy that will lead me on from here. Then the last thing she says, I don't Wait need a <laughs> what girl. <laughs> this is get am I the only one that feels like this? Like she's personally <laughs> talking about <laughs> no for real. Is there any is there anybody oh, online that, that, line that feels Rose, like yeah. that? I feel yeah. like that also Rose. Okay. Yes, you are not I don't know somebody in these squares or somebody online they have to feel, is anybody else feeling this way? Right. That's all anybody I want to know. This, else is out there. this is very personal right now. Yes. Go I totally with you, agree with you, Rose. Rose, no, you don't even have to apologize. You don't have to apologize. No, you do, do not. Yeah, we do tend to numb it away. We want to run away. No, she's a ticket. Me also. So I don't know about anyone else. Because yeah. if I knew you was going, I might have been down there with you. Because <laughs> wait, wait, this is the first time I ever read it with authority. Because when I was by myself reading it, I was like, I don't need to run away. I said, it very <laughs> You know, I said, I'm oh, to myself. And then Anastasia, Anastasia says, says yes, she agrees. I agree. <laughs> Thank and you, so thank I'm you, with friend. you, Rose. You are not on a lonely island by yourself. Because I'm sitting here going, I can't believe I'm screaming as loud as I am right now. But wait, Carolyn said she would have came with me. But then I was like, but I really wanted to be here by myself, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, not that I was isolating. We were here at home. You wouldn't see me. I would not have seen you. But we at least said, hey, we still safe. We safe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there anybody in our audience? Because I tell you, all of us who are here present, we all feel this way. Because I think my heart was beating fast when I was reading this poem. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, Lisa, you just really going right for the jugular. you like, y'all going to get right with this forgiveness, whether you want to or not. <laughs> Yes. I think you, you need to isolate sometime. To meditate, you need to isolate. Yeah, yeah. And that's true too, Glenda. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Because sometimes when you're around so many people, you're hearing so many voices. And sometimes that being by yourself, you could hear, sometimes you could hear clearly. And that could be a way of connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, running away. 
of Ooh. correcting the oh, thoughts, sure. correcting the thoughts as we meditate on what we have went through and going through. Yes. So then we know how to correct the thoughts. Oh yeah. Is there anybody in the audience can relate or feel to these personal de declarations that we have spoke about? Because I know Anastasia says she agreed. She agreed wholeheartedly. Is there anybody else who agree? Because right here, right now, we're all like, whoo, whoo, this is a bit much. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I was right. feeling attacked, but I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So soon we're going to be coming to an end. So, Rose, what, what are your final thoughts? So, first of all, Joni, you are an amazing host, girl. Thank you for taking on this today. I enjoyed being in this in this conversation. I think uh, I think we had a good discussion today. Yes, we did. And so, what we've been learning, though, we have first we went through collecting the dots, then we connected those dots, and now we're learning to correct those dots. And it's going to be a process, right? It's not going to be a short thing. For some people, it may be short. You can get it done quickly. But for some of us, it may take long, a long time. It could take months. It may even take years. But I would say, even in the meantime, to let go of the frustrations, don't hold on to any of that stuff. Don't carry it because God is with us. Um, and we don't need to always have the proof of what was done to us, Ooh. but what we do need to know is that we are, that we can be healed, that we can be set free from it. And that's our goal to be healed, not to be able to prove that somebody did it and say, and, you know, continue to blame those people, but know that we're going to be healed. And also we're not just glossing over the fact that we were injured, that we've been damaged, that we've been offended but to highlight the fact that God is there. He has a plan for us. He's able to heal us and he's able to keep us. So I thank you. This was good. Thank you for the discussion, moderator Joan and everybody <laughs> else on here, all the ladies that shared so yes. freely of the things from your heart. Oh, we shared deeply today. So I definitely want to pray that we cover, uh, that we cover each other in prayer. All the things that were revealed, the devil's not going to like it, but we're not going to let him get any more victory in our lives. God bless you all. All right. Thank you so much for coming. So we finished chapter seven. So we're going to be moving on chapter eight. So thank you so much for joining the Salem Baptist Church of Chicago Serenity Book Club. And we will be going on chapter eight. And Anastasia says, I am in my work office today. Thank you, Sister Rose, for being my mouthpiece. All right, now. <laughs> that is some good stuff. That's some good stuff. Yes. Yes. So read chapter eight. So next week we'll be ready to jump on to this new chapter. So thank you so much. And we're going to say, see you later. Talk to you later. And thank you so much. And you all enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Bye-bye.